Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to our final session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, today we'll cover four names of Allah uh, to conclude our series. And, and doing so, we'll have covered 100 names of Allah. We said 99, but there's 100 because today we cover Al Bar, Al Tayyib, Al Muhsin, and of course, Allah, uh, the doer of good, the good, the beneficent, and the, the God of all. Um, and so there's many names of Allah that relate to Allah's goodness, um, the mercy, the kindness. Uh, and we wonder maybe why so many, why are so many needed? Uh, and there's a reason, not just spiritually, so that we may be reminded of the things that we oftentimes forget. Life is hard. Life is going to beat us up in different ways. Life is going to take us through the ups and downs. And sometimes we don't see the world as kind. We don't see people as kind. We don't see uh, any mercy or any goodness at times. And so Allah reminds us in those different moments, in those different stages, there's kindness and there's goodness that are scattered throughout. And so this helps us kind of see, but also just linguistically. Uh, it's hard to limit in our language what Allah uh, and who Allah is with respect to goodness, that we sometimes say, oh, good, and thus have one or two kind of connotations to it. But uh, Allah, of course, being the, the, the first, the last, the origin of everything, and you know, above all the transcendent, it can't be, can't be contained within words. And so we want to see that we are linguistically limited when we come to Allah, but Allah also meets us where we are by providing different outlets for us to access and to be able to see Allah's goodness in all these aspects. So uh, as we mentioned, Allah's good is in all uh, of Allah's aspects, in Allah's essence, in Allah's actions, and what Allah's expectations are from us, that this good uh, is something that underlies that. And so as Muslims, we're encouraged to uh, not just have, uh, you know, not just have a, a restraint for, for different things, but to have to carry ourselves in, in matters of bir, uh, in matters of piety, in a way of tayyib, uh, of purity, as well as ihsan, excellence, and with reverence, knowing that Allah is uh, at the end of the day to whom we return and from whom we came. So to begin with uh, al bar al tayyib and al ihsan or al ahs uh, al muslim sorry. Uh, so al bar linguistically uh, al bar uh, is the expansion of good and of benevolence. Uh, bar in and of itself has that meaning of expansiveness or, or benevolence and uh, wilderness or vast desert is called barriya uh, due to its expansiveness and Allah is al bar and according to al ghazali uh, is is the doer of good is the one from whom every good deed and beneficence comes from um, and this name brings together all kinds of goodness at the very highest level delivering goodness with benevolence and excellence but also just the source of goodness so imam ibn al qayyim says that one of the signs of allah's bir uh, or goodness in piety is that Allah covers your mistakes from everyone else, that Allah uh, is, is, is cognizant of that, that not only is Allah pious and, and, and holding up the source of piety, but also uh, provides as such for those who worship Allah, those who believe in Allah. So Al-Bar refers to every form of goodness, charity, generosity, and kindness, and indeed everything in existence benefits inwardly and outwardly when uh, for Allah, uh, from Allah, uh, as Allah Al-Bar. Um, as al-bar, the source of goodness, the doer of goodness, and, and the fountain from which goodness comes. And so from the goodness of al-bar is that Allah multiplies the reward for one good deed, while a sin is only counted once. That we see that when someone does attempts a good deed, even doesn't maybe get to do it, but intends to do it, they get a reward for that. But when they make a mistake, when they maybe sin, that they're counted only and recompensed only as it is uh, sufficient for that sin. They're not multiplied in their in that in that recompense, but in the reward, they are recompensed multifold. Uh, and so, along with frequent forgiveness and overlooking the mistakes, this uh, aspect of al-bar is something that uh, that that can see that this goodness transcends any kind of harshness or any negativity that might be there. Uh, Allah doesn't cut off sinners. Allah loves the return of sinners, loves the turning back of sinners, loves the growth of sinners, uh, and is is both for uh, their, their return and this longs for the return, not just in the spiritual, spiritual sense, but in the worldly sense. Uh, we came from Allah until Allah we return, but we see that just because we sin, we may disconnect ourselves or get distance from Allah, but that doesn't mean that Allah will cut us off in this aspect, that Allah wants us to be, uh, come back. Allah wants us to come in a state 
uh, of return and repentance and uh, in a state of humility, because these are things that Allah loves and uh, Allah would not turn away that which Allah loves. And so bir in and of itself, when we talk about piety or righteousness, that it has many meanings of truthfulness, of goodness, accompanied by gentleness and righteousness. So we aspire for uh, having truthfulness, for being good, for being gentle, for being righteous, uh, because this is what uh, not only uh, who Allah is in being the most truthful, the most good, the most gentle, the most righteous, the most pious, but because it's that which Allah loves. And we, when we participate in that which Allah loves, when we cultivate that which Allah loves, we become closer to Allah. Uh, and that is the ultimate objective, is to be reunited with Allah in a state of favor that Allah accepts us. The next name that we have is al -Tayyib. Uh, linguistically, this means purity, and it's the opposite of malevolence or wickedness, and it's used to describe someone who is good-hearted or kind. Uh, Allah is tayyib, um, but is not tainted with evil or corruption, and Allah is tayyib in all aspects of his existence, in the names, the attributes, and the actions. And like Al-Qadus and as salam um, Allah is free from deficiency, but also the expectation of good and purity is that which is not just for Allah, but it is from us as well. And so we draw nearer to Allah by that which is good. As we were just saying, we, we uh, work in that in matters of bir. We cooperate in matters of bir and in, in piety, but we also uh, engage in uh, and like, you know, ingest, take in that which is tayyib, do that which is tayyib, that which is permissible, that which is good, and that which is pure. Uh, and and th these are things that draw us nearer to Allah. So Allah, as a tayyib, makes uh, permissible what is good and pure uh, and prohibits that which is impure and which is uh, which is harmful for us. And because Allah is al-tayyib, he has promised bliss uh, or tayyib for those who follow uh, and follow Allah, for those who believe in Allah sincerely, for those who work to connect to Allah, that for them, if they do it with sincerity and they do it accordingly, they will be given uh, a reward that is tayyib, uh, that they will be given something that is uh, that is is a bliss and something that is uh, very much in akin to what they strive for. And so when we embody this aspect of thib uh, or this aspect of uh, purity within ourselves, that we see that it, is, it comes first and foremost by remembering God. It comes first and foremost by beautifying our speech and our actions with good, and to also internalize that Allah is good, and what we do for Allah is good, purified of any insincerity. And so then the last name that we have before we get to Allah is Al-Muhsin. So uh, Al-Muhsin is the giver of good, is the one who goes above and beyond. Uh, ihsan comes from the same root, the, the word of excellence, uh, spiritual excellence, or just general excellence. Uh, and, and the name of Muhsin then gives a higher level to anything else that's attained. And we see it in the aspects of justice, and we see it in anything else that Al-Muhsin is uh, above and beyond anything that, that we can measure. And it's just this uh, standard bar none of uh, excellence that's that's there. And so Allah is the giver of good and the giver of excellence in our lives, but also in the world around us. Uh, and Allah is al-muhsin and excellent and good uh, and, you know, the giver of good and all these in every single sense of the word. Uh, Allah is excellent, but Allah makes excellence and uh, excellent. Uh, and excellence comes from Allah. So seeing Allah as all of these things within one. And so when we see the signs of excellence, we see them in the world around us. We see them in the creation and all over. Uh, ihsan in and of itself involves us uh, or involves doing something to its best in the internal and the external form. So when Allah creates, Allah creates in the in the best form, in, in ihsan. Uh, but when Allah operates as al-muhsin, does so as the excellent. And so uh, Allah loves for us as well excellence. Allah loves those who are muhsinin, those who are uh, who perfect, who are excellent, those who do good and you know strive to be uh, people of ihsan, people of excellence. And so it's not just that Allah loves these things and does these things for Allah's sake, but Allah loves when we do them as well. Though we can't be, you know, uh, ihsan, we can't, we can't be excellent, can't achieve that maybe in, 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 in our sense here. We'll always have some slight mistakes here, but uh, our excellence is 
coming from Allah and uh, Allah loves when we strive for that and when we strive for that ihsan. So when we live with this name, we reflect on Allah's goodness and creation and actions. We pay it forward to other people. We give from the good that we've been given, from the excellence that Allah has provided. We give as well and we seek that excellence through um, that which Allah has made and done for us. Uh, we do things with piety, we do things with bir, we do things with tayyib, with purity, and we do things with ihsan, with excellence, and we cooperate in righteousness, we beautify our lives and the world around us, and we beautify our relationships with these elements of goodness, of purity, of excellence, because Allah is all these things, and so too should we as the creation follow in the footsteps to be uh, closer to Allah as such. And the last name that we have here is the one that uh, we always begin with, but we sometimes overlook because we see Allah has 99 names, but we sometimes forget that Allah is the first of the these names and then plus 99. So we've gone through 99 names of Allah and attributes, and it's fitting to end with the unique name of Allah because it encompasses all of the names and all of the attributes, not just one aspect, but its entire essence. So Imam Ibn al-Qayyim says that when someone says, Allahumma, I ask you, they say, I am asking Allah who possesses the best names and the highest attributes by those names and attributes for X, Y, Z. Um, and so when we simply utter Allah, know that we call on the one who possesses those greatest attributes, the one who is, uh, is not just one of these attributes, but is all of these simultaneously in, in all times. And so this, na this name, unlike the other names of Allah, is unique because it's Allah's alone. The other names can be attributes uh, by which other times people might be described or uh, or anything like that in a sense of being more relational, but there's only this name that can refer to Allah. Uh, at the end of the day, nobody is known as Allah, uh, but someone can be uh, Rahman, somebody can be of these this different things. They can't be, you know, Al Al Rahman, they can't be these things, but they can have share, they can be uh, Salam, they can be all these different things, they can be Muhsin, they can do all these different things, but they can't be like, you know, Al, they can't be the the standard bearing, but at the end of the day, they can't be Allah. There's no derivative for them to be anything like that. And so many scholars consider this name to be the greatest of Allah's names, that it's the most mentioned in the Quran and in every hadith when it speaks of Allah's greatest names. And so Allah in speaking uh, in speaking the name of Allah, it originates in, in our chests and it ends in our hearts. And so it, it has this Allah, it like has a circle that it stays within our hearts. Um, and it is light on our tongue. And it is something that's easy to say, but it's something that helps us connect that ultimately uh, our connection with Allah comes from uh, from comes from our hearts uh, beyond all of our externalities. It's within our it's within our spirits, within our hearts. But also, uh, it is that which is uh, easy for us to say that at any point we can lift up uh, Allah, uh, and it's not overly complicated or difficult to say. So Allah is the one to whom we worship, the one to whom we uh, hope to go to with reverence and love, and Allah is the uh, the Lord and the sustainer of our universe. But Allah, at the end of the day, is greater. Than everything. This name reminds us that Allah is greater, that above any attribute, this is the greatest one. Uh, when we say Allahu Akbar, we put ourselves before Allah and we say that Allah is greater than anything. And this name, sometimes we forget that Allahu Akbar, Allah name, who Akbar, that Allah is greater or Allah is the greatest. And so when we see this attribute, we look for it in the mind you shade. Like I said, we're so accustomed maybe as being in, in Muslims and in uh, reading the Quran and, and, and speaking in our sense when we say uh, Allah's name, Alhamdulillah, inshallah, you know, all these things have Allah's names in it, but we sometimes miss the aspect of this, the significance of this name in the minutia of our, of our everyday lives. So we want to start with this name, we want to end with this name, we want to see the significance of it in our everyday lives. Sometimes we just use it, you know, as, as informal, but seeing the significance of it, be in awe of the magnitude of it, reflect on the meaning of this name through the understanding uh, of other names and see the other names through this name and vice versa. So as we come to the close of this uh, series, inshallah, it has been a humbling experience to be able to go through the names of Allah. Of course, we can never do justice to all the names of Allah. Um, it would uh, take many, 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 many lifetimes just to scratch the surface. And this is just a humble uh, scratching as well. But to be able to see Allah 
um, in the beauty of the attributes of Allah. So we ask Allah to allow us to uh, be people of uh, bir, to be uh, like in the, under the uh, umbrella of al-bar, we strive for piety, that we be people of that which is tayyib, that which is purity, and under the umbrella of al-tayyib, um, and that we be people of ihsan, or excellence, under the umbrella of uh, that who, which, that who is, or that, the one who is al-muhsin, and lastly, that we be uh, under the umbrella of Allah, as stewards, as creation of Allah, that uh, we preserve, we continue to remember these names, act on these names and memorize these names and, and use them to help grow in our faith uh, so that we may be given uh, what, what has been lifted up for those who draw close to Allah. So we ask this and humbly submit this uh, for solely for Allah's pleasure. May Allah accept and may Allah bless you all through these and that hopefully from this series, from everything else you've been able to connect to at least one new name of Allah uh, and be able to see Allah in all the different spaces of our life, even though we may not uh, you know, sometimes recognize it immediately. So inshallah, uh, we, we ask Allah to accept. Allahumma ameen. Thank you so much for being here for the series. And until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.